Hi everyone, it's Thursday the 19th of August and it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon and this is part 3 of the Saracen Raw build. So, beside me on the table here I've got a bunch of parts that have arrived uh, in the mail. I've been doing a bit of shopping on eBay. In fact, I'm still waiting on one part to arrive and if that had arrived today I could have completed the bike build like today and tomorrow. Um, and that's the front forks. I did. I can't remember if I mentioned in part two about the forks, but just in case, I opted to buy another pair of forks because basically I messed up the um, set that came with it. I tried to respray them. Um, you know, I soaked them in paint stripper to get the old paint off. That didn't work that well, so I gave up. Sanded them down as best I could put a coat of primer on that didn't take very well and I dropped those in the wet mud or not the wet mud just dropped them in mud outside because I didn't put anything underneath them because I had them hanging from a tree branch while I sprayed them that was mistake one mistake two is when I did that I should have put something underneath on the dirt so if they did fall I weren't gonna get you know mud and filth stuck to the wet paint like I did um, so I completely messed up the paint job basically because I was impatient that's all it was and I actually forgot that over at mum's I've got a um, shot blasting gun just a small sort of hobby type one that I could have bought here and used on that out back and uh, you know I've done an absolute cracking paint job if A I remembered I had that gun and B um, if I was a bit more patient. <laughs> Problem is with me, I hate preparing for paint jobs. Absolutely hate it. Um, and after I spent £35-ish on the um, paints, I figured, you know, I should have just gone on eBay and bought a pair of forks in the first place because I've just bought a pair in red. They're used, but they are in really good condition for 45 quid. <laughs> so I should have just gone down that path in the first place I think anyway I'm just going to show you what I've bought here first before we go over there and put a few bits on the bike because um, I can put the Dralimex on I can put the pedals on um, I could even put the chain on if I wanted to but I might just hold off on that one Obviously, without the forks going in, I can't put the handlebars on, can't put the stem on, so I can't put any of the cables or anything on either. So that will probably be part four and five. Anywho, you'll see a pattern here when I show you. You can probably just see something rather blue there. These are the pedals. That's the, the um, shape of pedals. I absolutely love that shape. Whether it's the plastic version or the metal version like these, I'm not fussed. Um, I often see these on BMX, but I like these because it's a nice big platform to put your foot on. And it's flat. Um, the only thing I don't like about these is the fact these are being sold as brand new. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but the paint has been scuffed on there. Now, I don't know if it's from storage because they are still sealed up in all this plastic wrapping they haven't been opened from it so I'm going to assume from storage but my advice to sellers because you may not get a buyer who's as nice as I am <laughs> um, you will get buyers that will completely nitpick at that and leave you negative feedback so I would say sellers if you have got something new like this and it's got a bit of damage from storage Put that in the description. I'm pretty certain that wasn't mentioned in the uh, description. I will double check, but um, I have seen feedback left from buyers where um, they've mentioned stuff like that. I mean, that's not going to bother me. Those little nubs—they're going to get the paint worn off as soon as I well when I take it out for the first ride anyway. So I sort of got on ahead. <laughs> I mean, they're definitely not used because this bit 
isn't all scuffed up and marked, neither are the reflectors, and they're all there, so that one's popped off a little bit, but that can be done in transport and storage. That was only a teeny, teeny weeny bit off. Anyway, so I've got those in blue. Now there's a reason I bought several parts in blue, because the first thing I actually bought was five metres of the um, outer cabling in blue. Because I want it to go different. You know, every bike I've built, whether it was for me or for fun or whatever, I've used black outer cable. And I thought, you know what? It's not expensive stuff. I've got some ferrules if I want to use them. Why don't I just, you know, buy something in a different colour? The only colour I really like the look of was blue. So buying this is what actually started off the um, theme of blue parts. So I then got the blue pedals. I then went and got an anodized blue seat post clamp. I could have used the one that was on it. Um, just put some fresh bolts on it because they were rusty. I just didn't like the style of it. Um, I like that sort of style. So again, that's another cheap chips part. I'm not expecting the anodized blue to actually last long, but it looked nice while it does last. Now the other thing. I bought There's a couple of quick release skewers for um, your wheels. I've got a pair of those again in blue. I think it would have been better if that end was blue as well, but never mind. At least the handle's blue. The only downside is you it's so hard to actually match all the blue. You know, unless you actually painted all of this yourself, I don't think you could match all the blues. But I'm not really fussed on that. I just want some nice. Actually, those quick curly skewers do match that one quite closely. Right, the last thing I bought, because obviously I'm going for V brakes on this one, and I found these, I think these are 25 quid, brand new in box. V brakes! And they do come with the brake blocks, as you can see, and they've got all the brake noodle and little rubber and everything all in there as well. So it's just a full kit, and there's a pair of them for 25 quid, so... Yeah, I'm pretty certain they're 25 quid, something like that. And they are Shimano Dior LX. I've got them both marked as front, but... To be honest, they should work on both. I've never seen the difference myself. Well, can't actually put, well I could put one pair on if I wanted to, but I'll save these for when the forks arrive, so I can put both on at the same time. Uh, things like the pedals, the seat post clamp, they can go on and drain and mix and I don't think anything else. Nope, so all I've got to do is pause you and turn you around, haven't I? This video shouldn't be too long because I haven't got many parts that I can pit, um, pit. My mind was trying to decide whether to say fit or put so it came out as pit. <laughs> yeah, there's not many parts I can put on the bike and put those on. That is just so simple, you know, it just literally just sits on top of the bike <laughs> seat post. Stay. Right. Let's pause you and get you turned around and get you zoomed in on everything and whatnot and uh, just get into it really. Let's yap. I'll do too much yapping, I think. But alrighty. Grab the parts that I need. Whoops, I need to fell over. Alright, so. For the seat post clamp, it is literally a case of just going. Uh, there we go. <laughs> that is it. And then just to stop it falling off, I'll just clamp that down a bit. No, that's a bit too loose. Turn that up. You can turn that around if you wanted and have this sort of faced that way. Entirely up to you. I know some people prefer it like that, especially if they're fitting like a bike light or a mudguard 
around here that might be easier if you had your seat post to come that way. I prefer mine that way. I've also noticed on this bike I've actually got two little um, threaded nubs there to put on like a bottle holder. Which I might do on this one. Anywho, I need a 5mm hex, which is here, and the rear radio mic, which is here. Right. Um, I'm not quite sure how I can do this without getting in the of picture. With me, one moment. Right, I think I'm ready. So, we'll take this bit off first. I'll stuck that back on there to, uh, for safekeeping. That's got to go on here. There's a little sort of cutout notch thing there. That's got to line up with the one on your dropout which is here on here. So this might look a bit odd but it's got to sit that way. Just going to put my screw in there and just get that started. Like so. Hopefully I haven't cross threaded that. Yeah that's got to be somewhere there, I think I can adjust it later if it's in the wrong place. Nope, I've got it. That's where it's got to be. I've already given this dry air a clean up. I don't want to clean it up too much because it's just going to get full of grease and crap pretty quick. Now, I don't know what front dry air I'm actually going to use. I've got a choice here. I have got that one. Or I've got that one. Which is a Shimano Acera. Acera. Um, this one is obviously going to need a clean first. But it does work. I don't know how it's going to look on here. Or even if this this um, clamp might actually be too big. Which I think it is. So I might go for the um, Acera. Acera. Hang on, just it. Yeah. That clamp. Oh no, it's not that clamp does fit. So I think I might go for this one. It's going to need this lined up. It's not properly lined up, but I'm going to give that a clean up in a minute. I'll do that off camera and come back when I do that. But first, should we get the pedals fitted? Way. There we go. Now, the pedals. There is a, um, a right way and a wrong way for these. I'll just come out the way. Filming professional, I am not. <laughs> um, yeah, there is a left and a right side, and it should say on the end of the axle here. Um, there should be an L and an R, which there is. I should be able to just show you that. These are double wraps. So these are only cheap things, so the paint worn off doesn't bother me. A bit of chip there, but yeah, in the end, if you look at this one, which doesn't want to spin, Jesus. I want to try and loosen them off. Hell, man, that's stiff. But yeah, anyway, that one, you can see it better on this one. I might just be able to see on there that there's an L for left, so that's got to go left side, obviously. Uh, what WD-40 behind the camera? 
because if this, these have been sitting around for a while they may have gone stiff or someone has uh, over tightened the axle shaft that's a bit better I think after some use they will uh, free up anyway now can get spanners to go in there but I find a 15 mil fits perfectly so see if I can find one should actually have multiple down here yep there's one these are sort of partly round with like two flat notches cut out of them now the thread this side if memory serves correct is the usual righty tighty left loosey Having that thread a little bit stiff, uh, or the axle a bit stiff, has its uses. Good. Here's one. <clears throat> I'll have to take it for a, a ride. If they are too tight, what you can do, and I may actually loosen them, I can do it on the bike, it'd be easier. Um, pop this cap off. You can actually get to the other side of the bearings there, and I can just loosen it if necessary. So, left side has the opposite thread, so I've got to um, put it in and rotate right the thread decided it didn't want to spin with the pedal there we go so you've got to remember that that one's used, this right side is your normal righty tighty lefty loosey reverse thread on the left side But just to confuse things a bit more, your bottom bracket cup, if you remember, is also opposite thread on the right hand side, but normal thread on the left hand side. What am I knocking over? Oh, Lego. Hold on. Right, so. I suppose I could put a set of those uh, V brakes on here, couldn't I? It wouldn't hurt. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to pause you and give that front drain a mecca. A good clean. Give me Dremel, probably. I've got some new wire brushes. I'm give those a whirl. Probably with some safety glasses on, because being cheap ones, they'll uh, um, probably throw the bristles out everywhere. I don't even know where this one came from, to be honest. Because I threw the one out that came off this bike, so... It's not seized, it works fine, it's just full of filth, so I'll pause you, I'll get this sorted, we'll get this on the bike, and I'll probably fit the uh, rear V-brake to it as well, so actually he's uh, starting to look like a bike, I might even put the chain on it, I can do that once I've got both the mechs on, so I'll be back shortly. Dookie, I've just ran the uh, Dremel over the Dralia mech, it's, uh, it's not perfect. But it's a lot better than what it was. Now, to me, it's not something that's going to get studied and whatnot. So, I think this one is this a five mil or is this a six? I've we'll done the X key. I'm going to throw it up here. Got a habit of throwing things up here. Yes, yeah, it's a two. It's a five. It is a five mil. Now, you do have to get these lined up. So what I like to do, if I can get the bolt out, bolt out, get this around, get the 
bolt started. Now, it's got, this has got to be straight with your chain rings. And of course you don't want it that high. <laughs> I usually set it somewhere. Actually that seems to be, that's the only place I can put it. So, you, know, you don't want it too far up, but you do obviously need to leave room for this to miss top chain ring. Once you're happy, you can get your hexagon key crank it up. In fact, I just realised the old clamp was there. But that's a bit high for this mech. You'll find different mechs, the position of the clamp is going to be a little different. So, I think we're going to be good. Right there, just make sure we're straight. There we go. Crank it up. I have seen online that there is like torque settings for a lot of things on the bike but I don't have any torque wrenches or anything so I use the FT method which is the um, Fuking Tight method. <sighs> that should be okay. Nope, because it's on the piss. I didn't check it, did I? It's not a problem. Just loosen it. I don't need to loosen it all the way, we need to loosen it enough. Just rotate it a bit more. Who's that? Here and there, that should be okay. If it is off, I can adjust it later when I put the chain on. So, get that done up nice and tight. There we go. Okay, so let's move on to the V brakes. Which again, there is a left side, right side. A bag of bits on the floor. Right, are they cable tied on? Yes. Right, I must remember to swap the brake blocks over. That's the only difference I can see because it's got a um, direction of the rotation of the wheel on there, which is set for the front brake. That's probably why they are labelled as front and rear, actually. Other than that, these bits, the actual caliper is exactly the same, front and rear. So, must change those brake blocks around. In fact, it might pay me to actually do it now. Uh, I need some snippety snips. Snippety snips, where are you? I think they're on the desk behind you. You're hiding them from me, aren't you? Right. Yeah. If I actually change the brake blocks over now, then I know it's all done and I won't forget what I will do. I'm going to sit on the uh, sofa here, I'll sit on the edge of it. There's my handlebar that's got to go on, but you know, I can't put it on. I've got a new stem as well to use. Which I think had arrived. I can't remember if it arrived for the other video, but just in case it didn't, there's the new stem. Bought two of these because I wanted one for the other Saracen. And I need a set of forks for the other Saracen as well. But <clears throat> Money can only go so far at the minute. I'm concentrating on this one, so... The ridiculous thing is, I've actually got a number of bikes with outstanding jobs on them. It probably would have made sense to get those done first. I mean, I've got a... Uh, a rally, my rally Scafell, which is currently on um, bike trailer duties at the minute. 
that, uh, well, it's not an important job, but I do want to get it done. That's a um, gear shifter modification. I can actually show you the ones I want to put on. I'll do that in a minute, but they're basically a similar design to these, but seven speed and in silver or grey or whatever you want to call it. So, because I'd prefer that style of shifter. Right, so I'm going to swap the brake blocks over again. Five mil hex. On these ones at least, you can get brake blocks with a different um, screw head or nut. Um, which the other ones, they will either take a 10 mil wrench or a 6 mil hex. These ones are the uh, 5 mil. All I'm going to do is just undo that. <coughs> Scratch your throat. Alright. It can be a bit fiddly, these. Because you've got all these bits and spaces and things for these. So I'll take that one off. Take this one off. If I swap them over, the um, rotation will be correct. Now what I'm going to do, put that lever down there, and put this pad in here. don't know if there's any particular order for these washers and things, but what I like to do is put that spacer with the concave bit in it, I don't know if you can see that from there, on first with like the domed spacer, with the dome facing into that concave bit, and then I'll just stick the washer on. That's the way I do it. I suppose you could stick the washer on first. He says, spitting all down his t-shirt. It also helps if you put the nut in the correct way. Anyway, this is the first one. I'm not going to tighten those up because I'm going to have to adjust those uh, for when I get the wheel in. So if I do that, I'll just tighten that enough so it doesn't roll everywhere. Now, on the back here, some of them have like three positions, there's three little holes, because on these uh, V-brakes you've got that little spring peg right there. And this has got a choice of three, so I can either put it on the bottom one, middle one, or the top one. When I do V-brakes, and again this is just something I do, it's not necessary, I like to go for the top one. So that just slides on like that. That spring's got to go over there on that side. <laughs> I might, as these are brown, I might get away with the middle one actually. No, I'm going to do it my way, I think. I like to use the top one, so. Now you do get the uh, necessary fixings, you do get the bolts with these and the brake noodle and rubber bit. I don't need the brake noodle or the rubber piece at the minute. might need a sharp object to uh, break into the bag. Nope. My little pointy finger has managed that. I'm going to keep the other bits in the bag though. Let's put them down here with all the other bits and bobs. So again, these are five mil as well. You'll find a lot of uh, hexagon screws are uh, five mil. Unless you get the grip shifts, which are actually smaller. I think there's something like four mil on some of them, or even a three. That goes on there. If you're wondering what the white is on these black bolts, that's the thread lock. So you haven't even got to put any thread locker on them. It's all done for you. So that can go on there. Nice and dope. No. I've just got to put the other one back together now. Let's bring you back this way so you can actually see me on the sofa. Ooh. I've just got to do the same with this one. There is a slightly deeper spacer on there with one of those um, diamond washers as well. I'm just going to leave it set up like that. If I need to change the spacing or anything, I can do that once I've got the wheel in. 
to just pick up that spacer, that spacer, that washer, and that. And it's just the same for the other side. Now I've lost my screw, I'll put it down somewhere because I needed to pick that up. There it is. Shot and I'm not shot at all. I need longer arms, I can't reach the handle. <laughs> there we go. Right, again, we use the same hole that will go in, or it is in. Twat. Duh. I think, yeah. I haven't got to swap the brake blocks around. It's just that you've got a direction on these brake blocks. Cheaper ones don't have a direction. You just chuck them on either way. Not that I've seen anyway. I've not seen any arrows on them. These ones being um, Shimano. I'm actually glad I bought these because I was going to buy the brake blocks uh, separately. <laughs> Just making sure that they were going to go the same way. Bloody springs. Some of them, these feed brakes, don't have the spring that goes all the way up the top. The problem is that keeps uh, pinging off the little post. Some of the cheaper V brakes only have the spring mechanism in the bottom there. Alright, should we do the chain and make it look even more like a bike? I'm glad when I've got the wheels on this, to be honest. So I can get it off the uh, Blinken stand. Right, so it's got Shimano Dior crank set and it's got Shimano Dior V brakes. It's one of the reasons I actually picked them. Uh, do I have a master link with this? I didn't think of that. Also, didn't think about how I'm going to get into it. Repair cuts. And poke a hole in it. Went through it like Mr. Muscle. There we go. Don't know if there's... Oh, we don't need a master link. They've done it that way. They've left um, one of the links open. <coughs> See? Some chains you buy and you need a master link because they won't have that bit open. But uh, Dressco has decided to do it. This feels just like any other bike chain to be honest. I know some people probably wouldn't use it because it's cheap. Well I say cheap, it's about the same price as any other chain I've ever bought to be honest. And that drain is going to have to be set up because it's in the wrong place. Um, by setup, I mean this bit's too far that way, so I need to adjust one of these screws. I think it's the one closest to us. There's two screws on there. Right. Um, somehow, I'd actually forgotten how the chain went through the mechanism. I think. Confuse myself because I'm doing this upside down as well. I've got this like that, yeah. Then round that pulley wheel. And Bob is your auntie. Now all I've got to do is just pull these two bits together and use my chain splitter tool to join them. Um, it does, or did say on the pack that it is for a um, 6, 7, and 8 speed. So. <laughs> I have actually used Dresco chain before and it hasn't been a problem. I've used their cables. It's not a company I'm hugely familiar with. It's um, a brand at a local hardware store stocks. I've had their bike lights though and I can't complain about those. So.
Yeah, just make sure I've got the chain right. I'm confusing myself. I am confusing myself. Right, so I've got that in there now. Now, I find that if you have to split your chain and you're going to leave the little rivet there, don't push it all the way through. Leave enough hanging through so you can actually just link it like that temporarily. That helps hold it together. And uh, actually helps to put it back together like this as well. I don't want to go through too far because I don't want to go through the other side. That is about level with all the other links, so there we go. We have a chain on it as well now. Uh, I can just grab a screwdriver. Should be able. I'm pretty certain on this drayer, it's this one. It's that screw not going to work. Try flared because you can use either on this. Yes, yeah, it's that one. Might have done that one a wee bit too far. Might. Once I've got the wheels and the cables and everything on this, I may have to adjust it. I may have to do the same on here. Two adjustment screws here. And all they do is adjust your drainier from, you know, the back and forth. How far up that can go and how far back that retracts. So, if you're ever wondering, when you shift your bike into uh, first gear at the rear, and it suddenly drops off, the chain drops off and goes between the spokes and your gears, it's probably because one of the screws is out of adjustment on the um, drainer. Because I do uh, fall out of adjustment. Ooh, that was my leg is a chunk of silicon. Don't know where that came from. Right, that is all I can do on it for now until these forks arrive. I mean, I can't put any cables on, I can't put my wheels on. I can't set up the drailers properly until the wheels are on. Um, can't put my handlebars on. I could actually set up the handlebars. I could put the shifters on with the um, handlebar grips, but I'll wait for that as well. And I suppose I could cut some of the um, outer to length. I could cut the bit to go in there, ready. Looks like there's a, a little um, cable stop here. You know, I could do this one from here to there, and I could do the one for the front gears. I've got to go from there to here. Now, this is a multi pull type of dray, so it can be pulled from the top or the bottom. For what that pull up from the bottom, Cable would have to go around here, I think. Something like that. Pretty certain that is a two way. I call these um, front rows either an up pull or a down pull, that's what I call them. <laughs> yeah, I think that one is actually a. Oh yeah, that's right. If I need to pull it from down, I've got to run the cable up here through a groove and then to the clamp. And that will pull the drainer from the bottom. But as this one pulls from the top, I'll just go straight from here to the clamp. That's all I've got to do. So yeah, that is a, a multi-way one. If I can find my other drainer, yeah, wherever I put it, I can actually show you close up. Uh, I don't know where I put this Sarah one. I don't know. Whew. Starting to look like a bike again. It's actually looking nicer with these blue parts on than I thought it was going to be, actually. Right, I'm going to end the video there then. So, I'm not sure what we'll get up to in part four. Definitely the forks, because that's the only other. Well, I've got to put those on before I do anything else. Um, yeah, I think I'll do the forks, the front V brake. And at least get the handlebar and the gear shifters and everything mounted and and the wheels so I can get it on the floor. So I'll give those good those good wheels a good clean. I suppose they are good wheels. 
I'm not sure what I was trying to say there. Now give those wheels a good clean, get them ready. And then part five will be uh, setting up the gears and brakes and installing the cables. I've got the seat go back on, haven't I? In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, I'm going to buy a new seat for it. It is quick release, but just for now, I'm going to go over that with the uh, brush. But there we go, it looks even more like a bike now. That's way too high for me. <laughs> Actually, it's so high up, it's not even in shot properly, is it? It's only the post. Right, anyway, enough blabbering. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for part four. And we will be another step closer to finishing this. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.